I was going to draw Fluttershy's brother for this one, and then I watched the episode. I am not drawing that jerk. So have Link Pony instead. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 11. Flood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, she trips up. <laughs> it was like I had a mouthful of peanut butter. <laughs> That's funny because butters. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fletcher Brutcher. I think you botched that one. Um everything that I've seen has the second word spelled B R U T T E R. And that's how I would pronounce it. Butter. Hmm. Okay, just make sure I'll have a, I'll have a take that sounds like that. Flutter butter. I didn't say butter, I said brusher. Hmm. Because for some reason they threw an R in there, and for some reason we can't just say brother. Flutter, butter. Hmm. I'm actually just pronouncing it that way because that's how I heard him pronounce his little nickname for Fluttershy. And speaking of this travesty of a pony... <laughs> uh, the only thing I don't like about the episode, as I said, I was going to draw him, and then I watched the episode, and I more likely want to throw him out of a window. Problem is he has wings. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really hate him per se, I'm just like, why does he have to be such an ass? Why? Also, stop touching Rainbow Dash! She clearly doesn't like it! In the human world, she could sue you. <laughs> In the pony world, she can hit you with a storm cloud, which she did. <laughs> uh, I almost drew that, though. I almost drew him after he got zapped by the thundercloud because I liked the way his hair looked. If there was not a Link Pony in the background, that would have been acceptable because it was after he had been chastised. <laughs> uh, cause I was like, I'm, I don't really feel like drawing him. And I saw him zapped like, oh, that's cool. But then I heard about the Link Pony. And I'm like, yes, Zephyr Breeze, you do not deserve a drawing. But Link Pony does. <laughs> so let's spend the next 15 minutes or so talking about Link Pony. <laughs> Yes, Link Pony needs his own episode. Also need to know if he's single because he has lots of rupees. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, yeah, he's going to buy a shield. Because <laughs> in a couple of the games, that's pretty much what you do. You walk around, gather enough rubies, probably cutting grass, then going to the shop and going, I want a shield. <laughs> yes, as you can tell, I'm drawing him playing the Ocarina in that classic pose from Ocarina of Time. Actually, we're pretty much succeeding talking about Link Pony. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think anyone's actually here for us to talk about Link Pony. So let's talk about everything else in the episode, but Zaffir Breeze. Also, apparently people I know are like, why did they take the name Zaffir? We like the name Zaffir. Zaffir. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this episode really shows off how much Fluttershy has grown. Yeah, she was able to stand her ground the entire time and stand up not only for herself, but for her parents. And it shows that she still has a little bit of weakness because Rainbow Dash had to give her support that, yes, this is the right decision. You have to help him move out on his own so he can learn to be a better pony. Because that is right now, like, you have no sense of personal space, do you? You do realize you're being an ass. An absolute total ass. I'm not talking about that poor donkey over there. <laughs> I mean, you basically trashed your parents' house, trashed his nice little shed. Also, I'm not quite sure why I didn't pick up on the classic, oh, look at this important thing. Oh my god, it's being destroyed! Kind of cliche. <laughs> because we weren't anticipating Zephyr being such a total jerk. I would like <laughs> to stake him out in the Everfree Forest, please. <laughs> Because usually that's a common trope. Look how important this object is. Or this place in town. Isn't it lovely? A couple scenes later. Oh my god, they're destroying it. <laughs> yeah, I saw that coming on my way. This time, not so much. I was expecting the brother to be like an opposite to Fluttershy. Because that would make a nice contrast. But this isn't really the opposite to Fluttershy. I mean, he's mean compared to Fluttershy. But this is... I was speaking like speaking more along the lines of someone who is very outgoing. Very, um confident and sure of themselves, both of which he projects 
but I wasn't expecting a total jerk. Yeah, I think they were trying to go for the Tom Sawyer kind of, I am lazy because I'm so smart I get other people to do my work, but they failed miserably at it. Well, they weren't entirely going for that. They pulled it off a little bit with Spike in Twilight's castle because he did trick Spike into doing the cleaning, and that's a total Tom Sawyer thing. But the whole, oh, I bet I can talk to animals because Fluttershy can, and because I saw Rarity's cat dip her paw in the dye, this will totally work. Mm hmm Yeah, the rest of the cats was fine, and very well done. I liked all their attitudes. I do wish Rainbow Dash would have smacked him sooner, but I don't think they could have showed another pony hitting another pony in any way. I mean, especially after the interesting reactions people got when Angel Bunny, which everyone hates, smacked <laughs> Fluttershy in that one episode. Though we, we did get Fluttershy getting smacked several times by a tail, but that was completely by accident and not on purpose, so... Because I have a feeling Rainbow Dash would have beaten the living heck out of Zephyr. <laughs> Why? But most of the time that Zephyr was hanging all over poor Dash, it was in front of Zephyr's parents. And considering how shy and retiring they are, it would have been cruel to do that in front of them. But going on to Fluttershy and, and I have to say, and Zephyr, parents back into pony naming trends so they're mr and mrs shy fluttershy is fluttershy but he's zephyr breeze so do male ponies not take the family name because shining armor doesn't end with sparkle but mr and mrs sparkle do yeah but i'm saying the offspring yeah i'm, I'm just saying that you know we have mr and mrs sparkle and twilight sparkle but then there's Shining Armor, so I can see the pattern there is what I'm saying. <laughs> so if him and Cadence have a male heir, will it be a completely diff... Yeah, but we only have Cadence. Huh. That's gonna be a... And, you know, because we have the new kid and everything, but I'm like, huh. That's confusing. Well, remember, Cadence is a short name. She's Princess Miyamori Cadenza. She just goes by Cadence. And she's still Princess Miyamori Cadenza, even though she married Shining Armor. And Shining Armor is still Shining Armor. He's not Shining Cadence. Cadence. <laughs> I don't care about that mess up. I'm moving on. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Sorry, my brain just thought of a very bad scenario for Zephyr. <laughs> if Shining Armor ever saw how he treated his sister and his family. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's even worse if Cadence saw him? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm sorry, Zephyr. Rainbow Dash does not have the hots for you. <laughs> also, she's more successful than you, by the way. I'm surprised Rainbow Dash never pointed that out. I was like, dude, I'm a member of the Wonderbolts. I made my dream come true. How about you? <laughs> I'm wondering if that didn't get mentioned in this episode because it was written before a uh, newbie Dash. Hmm, that's a good point. So, I'm afraid to ask... <laughs> Nitpicks? I'm going to dance around the subject of Zephyr as much as possible. Is I've known too many ponies like him, and so this cuts very close to home in a negative way. Ah. So, going to the job at Rarity's shop, those bowls were too small for that amount of fabric. Dye is valuable. You usually put it in a vat, and you usually have a lid on it if you're not actively using it to avoid spillage or um, any type of loss from evaporation. Also, many dyes often have fumes to them, and it's much better to do your dyeing outside or at least in a well-ventilated room. Mm, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Going on to the window washing, if all that was needed to do to clean the windows was have Spike with a pulley, why were we even looking for a Pegasus pony to do the windows? And Twilight? Magic? Housekeeping spells? That would be like the first thing I would cast if I had magic would be housekeeping spells. I'm thinking what's going on there is Twilight came up with something that Zephyr could do to try to give him responsibility and complete a project because Fluttershy asked. Well, all of it was because Fluttershy asked because she knew that she couldn't just leave him to find stuff on his own. It would be, oh, yeah, uh, no, I'm looking. No, I haven't found anything yet. No, you wouldn't believe how hard it is to find a job in this town. 
I mean, there's really nothing that matches my skill set. Oh no, I couldn't possibly do manual labor. <laughs> Zephyr was just so disrespectful. I mean, it's one thing to fall on hard times and look for assistance from your family. It's another thing to just trash your parents' prized possessions because they happen to be in the way of something you want to do. Even if you're taking over this space, you couldn't take the time to move the objects out of the space that you were commandeering. Oh, that reminds me of a point, though. Um, her father used to work for the Cloud Factory and has been secretly collecting samples of the best products from each season. So that's a nice little touch. That's a good way to sneak in a little bit of history in the episode. Mm -hmm. And it's a very interesting collection to have, and it's very neat, and I would hope that that's totally allowable. But at the same time, it, you know, you're just putting clouds out to make the weather. It's not like you're truly stealing a finished product from someone who paid for it. Though I would like to ask, how does one grow flowers in the clouds? <laughs> the, the flower box was made of clouds, and then it looked like it was filled with dirt. So you get a cloud, and then somehow the cloud can support dirt, which allows you to grow the plants. Oh, that actually reminds me. The padding of the seats in the house were clouds as well. At least in the kitchen. Well, it makes sense to use clouds as much as you can because how much stuff can actually be stable on clouds? I mean, the Pegasus ponies have, you know, Pegasus magic that allows them to walk on clouds. But how do you support the structures on the clouds that the residents actually live in? Also, if... Zephyr doesn't have anywhere to live and it's Cloudsdale. Couldn't you just throw together a few clouds and give him a little space off to the side? Mm. Or stick him on his own cloud and then arrange for a very strong breeze to carry him away? <laughs> uh, that's another reason I didn't want to draw him. I'm afraid that I might get some people like, like, my art's already as uh, unnoticed as possible. <laughs> Maybe I should have drawn him just to get the rage votes. <laughs> but no, I'm sticking with Ling Pony, as you can tell. <laughs> yes. Uh, plus, I like Link a whole lot better. <laughs> well, we, we like Link, period. We've been Legend of Zelda fans basically almost our entire lives. Mm -hmm. Even though I've never played the first game as thoroughly. I actually got introduced to the Legend of Zelda series playing the second game. <laughs> Philistine. <laughs> and everyone at this point is going, I thought we were talking about ponies. They've they've stuck to Legend of Zelda in this episode. <laughs> it's because we liked the rest of the episode, but Zephyr Breeze left a sour taste in our mouths. <laughs> Please do not speak of Zephyr being anywhere near my mouth. Apparently he has a thing for ponies that are not into him, so I want him as far away from me as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and I would think that main therapy would fall under the category of a trade school as opposed to a more traditional college. So why would he have the whole cap and gown and, um, I'm sorry, golden tassels are usually Valley Victorian or the top percentage. He really did that well. And if it had that formal of a graduation, wouldn't he have notified his family so they could actually attend? And that's another thing, is the name of it, Mane Therapy, it looked more like he was styling the manes and not giving the ponies any kind of real therapy. Because it sounds like you were, especially the way he said it, like, you wouldn't believe how much stress ponies store up in their manes. I'm like, okay, so you do some kind of treatment to the scalp? Uh, and then you pull up the style thing, and I'm like, that doesn't seem like Mane Therapy. <laughs> no, it seems more like Mane Stylist. But maybe main therapy was, you know, his zany idea of how things should be. Or he didn't stay in the school long enough to find out what it was actually supposed to be like. I also like that saying peeved is apparently not appropriate for young foals to hear. <laughs> I almost forgot to bring that up. Yeah. Fluttershy technically cussed in this episode. And everyone was like, go Fluttershy! <laughs> it's like... Judging by that reaction, okay, so this is a word that you do not say in front of foals in the MLP universe. So, 
Now, in regards to actual children who may watch this show, does that mean that they're going to go to their parents and go, Mommy, Daddy, Fluttershy said a bad word? Or are they going to start parroting it constantly because they're like, ooh, this is something we can get away with? <laughs> Good point. Good point. Also, I like the use of that word. What was it? Parroting? I never heard that before. But I automatically get the concept. <laughs> Polly wants a cracker! <laughs> You do remember what children are like. They they are like sponges. They pick up everything around them and can spit it back out. Yeah, they're like highly absorbive slash reflective mirrors. <laughs> or monkey see, monkey do. Mm -hmm. So do you have any more points? Uh, if he was so much into main therapy, why did he keep messing up Fluttershy's mane so much? And absolutely no concept of personal space. Ridiculously arrogant insanely sure of himself, though apparently that's all supposed to be a facade because we see him break down and go, I never finish anything because I'm afraid of failing, so I'd rather quit. Oh, and a quick design note, apparently my artistic friends don't like his color palette because to them he feels kind of greasy. <laughs> also, this pony brings up an interesting thing again because I saw this design on another pony. Apparently ponies can have a five o'clock shadow. Apparently so. I just realized that other pony I saw was actually... Yeah, no, oh, wait, that was actually in this series, because I remember another pony who was a construction pony who also had a five o'clock shadow. And I'm like, how does that even work? Does the hair get... Of course, that also brings up Fluttershy's father's mustache. I'm like, how does that... Does he just, like, glue mm -hmm. that on there, or...? And other ponies having beards, we've seen that. Don't forget about Star Swirl the bearded. So, you know, many aspects of these ponies are humanized. And then I wonder, again, going back to pony family structure, coloration. Because in terms of coloring, uh, Fluttershy seems to take more after her mother, while Zephyr takes more after the father. And Twilight and Shining Armor are each a different color. So, you know, does that pass down, you know, matrilineally, paternally? Is it random? Are we reading too much into this? And is, you know, the art team and character design team just trying to differentiate everyone enough that they can be easily recognizable by young audiences, but keep them similar enough that, oh, okay, we have something that equates to a family resemblance. Mm. Another art friend of mine actually commented on how much he liked the design of Fluttershy's parents because it did a very well job of um, taking traits from Fluttershy and interpolating them backwards to where they came from. And he really liked the color palettes for both the parents. And the, he said that the um, the parents' designs reminded him a lot of like the 60s and stuff like that. Now they seem very much the quiet couple from the classic sitcom. You know, the ones that were easily shocked and always polite and, you know, never said anything rude. You know, the ones who are always the perfect guests or the perfect hosts. So like I mentioned before, we liked everything about the episode except for him. <laughs> there were many ways that a similar circumstance could have been portrayed without making me want to stake him out in Never Free Forest. <laughs> uh, so are you ready to wrap things up? Mm -hmm. Well, I enjoyed the episode except for Zephyr Breeze. I can't wait to see what's on the horizon for My Little Pony. As much as I detest Zephyr Breeze, you have to hand it to the writers for evoking this much emotion. Hmm. They found a way to push a lot of buttons, and they deserve credit for that. Yeah, they actually maybe detest a pony that wasn't a villain. <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't even dislike the guy that took Pinkie Pie's party cannon this much. He was just slimy. Mm -hmm. And this has been our thoughts on... My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 6, Episode 11, Flutter Butter. Thank you for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. I would really enjoy that and it would encourage us to continue to do more episodes. If you like my art, you can find me on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Or if you want to support me, you can go to my Patreon or check the link for commission availability.